Hello again folks and welcome to another screencast on biomechanics and this time we'll be looking at the third aspect of projectile motion and this is what we call the Bernoulli principle. This can often be quite complex for students and so please take your time to go over the screencast a couple of times at least making sure you understand the key principles. All right, so when we throw projectiles, we can also generate what's called a lift force. This was developed by an individual called Daniel Bernoulli, and he used the principles of fluid mechanics to create this idea of a lift force. He suggested that you can give an additional lift force on a projectile or an object in flight by using what we call an aerofoil shape, which we'll come to in a moment. But essentially the Bernoulli principle is the higher the velocity of airflow, the lower the surrounding pressure. So the faster the air is traveling, the pressure around the air becomes lower. If we can use this to create a lift force, it gives us a huge advantage as it means a projectile can stay in the air for longer if we apply this principle. Here is a screen to show you the basic theory of how this works. So what I'm going to do here is just run you through this for your notes and then I'm going to show you this for a diagram to help you explain what's going on. So first of all we need an aerofoil shape and I'll show you this shape in a moment. Think about plane wings, if you slice them in half um, you can see this sort of shape as an aerofoil shape. It has a curved upper surface and a flat lower surface. That's very important to the aerofoil shape. Because of this curved upper surface, it means the air has to travel a longer distance over the top of the aerofoil. And as it's traveling a longer distance, it's got time to generate increased air velocity. The flat surface underneath the aerofoil shape is a shorter distance for the air to travel. And so therefore, the air underneath the aerofoil shape travels at a lower velocity than the air above the curved line. So that's a theory. Make sure you have that in your notes. Here is it in principle. So this is what we call an aerofoil shape. So something that's curved on the top and flat along the bottom. And one of my students best described this in recent years as a whale shape. So you could imagine that, or a teardrop shape almost, but you must make sure it's got a flat bottom. So as the incoming air approaches this aerofoil object, whatever it may be, it has to split because there's two parts of the shape. So as the air approaches the aerofoil, the air along the top has a longer distance to travel and so therefore it can generate more speed or air velocity. So the velocity of that blue line is going faster. However, you can see the air will then hit the bottom as well and because it's a shorter line, the velocity is going to be lower than that on the top. And so therefore airflow above the curve travels further and is gaining speed and airflow below the aerofoil on the straight path travels a shorter distance and therefore the air below the aerofoil is traveling slower than the air on the top. That is technically how this works. Now in terms of how does this generate lift, we need to think of pressure. So the golden rule with regards to the Bernoulli principle is this, as velocity increases, pressure decreases. So in anywhere where you've got high velocity, you're going to have low pressure. And if you have low velocity, you'll have high pressure. So always remember it that way around. Very important that. So let's go back to our aerofoil shape. So we've got this air traveling over the top of the curve, which has high velocity. We've got the air traveling underneath the curve, which has low velocity. So all we need to think about is adding the pressure to that. So air above the curved surface has high velocity 
which according to our rule of thumb a minute ago, this will create low pressure. So the blue line has high velocity, but low pressure. Therefore, logically, the red line has low velocity or lower velocity than the blue line. And therefore, it should have higher pressure. So the red line is low velocity, but higher pressure. Now, in terms of important points, the other thing to remember is that fluids move from areas of high pressure to low pressure. And when you're answering any exam question to do with the Bernoulli principle, if you have to word the answer, remember to write that statement because it usually gets you some form of mark. So let's think logically about the wing of an aeroplane. So if we've got faster air running over the top of the wing, but low pressure, and then underneath on the straight part, we've got low velocity air, but high pressure, what that high pressure does underneath the wing is move or help lift the object up. So you've got lots of pressure pushing or helping to push the object upwards because the high pressure is underneath. We call that a high pressure zone. And if the surface is flat, it will move or lift that object upwards and that is called a lift force. Okay, so it's fine thinking about planes because they're a natural aerofoil shape. But in sport, we don't have that many projectiles that are a natural aerofoil shape. They don't look like whales. We don't launch whales, whale-shaped objects into the air. So we have to think about how to apply this principle to sporting projectiles. And we call this the angle of attack. If we can manipulate the projectile that we're throwing at a specific angle, we can create a lift force. If we think about those curved surfaces and flat surfaces. And if we throw an object at a specific angle, we can make generally an aerofoil shape to maximize that lift force. So for example, if we've got that discus and you put it down on the ground, it won't look like an aerofoil shape. It's just, it's a little bit curved on top, but actually a discus is also curved along the bottom if you hold it. However, if we can throw that discus at a specific angle into the air, it creates more of a curve on top and becomes slightly flatter on the bottom in terms of the way the discus meets the air resistance. And the angle of attack that we're interested in for any projectile to maximize lift is 17 degrees. So if we can throw that discus at 17 degrees at that pitch, it will mean air will travel longer over the top of the discus, giving it maximum velocity and low pressure, and it will travel faster, uh, sorry, slower than the air on top underneath the object, and therefore giving us high pressure underneath the discus, which will generate a lift force to help it stay in the air for longer. And that means discus throwers can throw huge distances if they can maximize that angle of attack. Okay, as I say, it is a bit complex, the Bernoulli principle. So please go over the screencast a few times, make sure you're clear on how it works. The key thing to remember is about the velocity and the pressure. So go back to that slide and make sure you understand about the velocity and the pressure and remember which way around it is. And from that point on, you should be okay. All right, thanks for watching. And again, if you need any more help with anything to do with biomechanics or A-level PE, please pop to the iSpeak PE channel on YouTube.